Hello and welcome to Riverside Crafts this afternoon. Today I'm going to be sharing how I make my little notebooks. Um, they're really cute. This one's my shopping list size one. Make nice little presents for people. You can do them for um, in their tastes and their colours. So it's a great idea. First of all, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp the image that I'm going to use today, which is um, one of these gnomes, and it's by from a bear by Fantasy Read. Um, I'm using Versifying Claire. So anyway, I hope you're all all right. And I just do this little bit here, bit of stamping to keep things going. And welcome to Jean, Jean and. Um, Rosalyn, because I can see those two names have come up. So, hi, it's nice that I'm not my own. Now, you can see this is why I like my um, my platform because I haven't quite got it right on one side, but I can go back in um, because it's not moved and just do it again. I obviously didn't put enough ink on that side when I was busy sorting it this morning. There we go. Now, this is watercolour cardstock. Um, it's 90 pounds so it's not it's lightweight watercolor card so it's not a heavy one um it's one by it's called gold line um, we do have it in store it comes in great big pads um and that which you think oh my goodness it's going to it's a lot to, to buy at once but it lasts a long time and it is a very effective way of buying watercolor card and it's it's a nice card to work with so that's quite it's quite nice to use right so i'm going to start off um different color way today i think i'm going to go start with some purples this is the new purple um from the distressing range that's what i'm painting with um and this is a villainous po potions villainous potions it is and it's a gorgeous deep purple which is lovely um so i'm going to be using that one today to start off to do his hat and as you can see, it just it nicely moves on the caper. You don't need to have too much worry about what you, you're picking up and moving around. So it's quite nice. Oh, that's a bit wet. Never mind. It'll sort out. Drag it up there a bit. Bring it down here. When I'm blending to put more colour in, I tend to go to an edge and then I will bring in um, some darker colour, a darker parts of it, just to give it a little bit more of a, a sense of shape, adding those darker bits in at the edges and then just dragging it across as I go. So just putting it in along those bits where I want it to be darker to give it a little bit more shade as we go and put it in right i'm gonna give my brush damp brush a minute on this side here i just want to just draw that out a bit and blend it i've not got any definite lines haven't on that side that's fine okay right um for their his nose and his hands i'm going to be using dried marigold which is a really nice um color to use for that who else has joined as i can see a couple of other names now we've got um dawn watching and claire watching so welcome um today nice to see everybody's names up there that's a little tiny bit of aged mahogany I've added in there just to give him a little bit of a, a sort of a, a, a ruddy nose just so it looks nice and healthy and outsidey. Okay and a little bit more just to help me with some shadowing on the hand just to blend it in and give him a bit of dark in areas right. So that's his nose and bits done. Now going to do the flowers. 
and at the moment I'm, the orange I've chosen is ripe persimmon and it's quite a definite bright orange which contrasts really nicely with this deep purple so that's what I'm going to be doing now so this is the ripe persimmon I'm putting on at the moment I'm also going to put a bit here on your hat. See the other one. Now, when it comes to painting these, you can spend as long as you would like blending and matching your colours in, um, or you can just do a nice, quick, general wash. Um, I tend to do somewhere in the middle, a little bit of both really. Um, hi Claire, welcome. Um, because it just it works for what I'm doing. Um, the yellow I'm using is Wild Honey. And it's sort of a, a rich, um, warm yellow. As you can see, I'll put a little bit on top of his hat. I'll take it in here. There we go. Which is quite nice. I'm just going to grab a little bit of my brown, and the brown I've got on here today is Walnut Stain. I'm just going to put a little bit here in, just to get a bit of shadow in there. Okay, I'm also going to use the Walnut Stain to do his shoes. So that's those done quite nicely. I'll just pick up a bit more and put it in to do some shadow hiking. Okay, so that's done that there. That's looking good. Right, I'm just going to put some, do some of the patches on his hat, and I'm going to use some of the greens. Now this one is peeled paint, and I'm just going to put that in there. Okay, and then, then I'm going to use peeled paint to do my leaves as well. Try not to put too many colours on anything in one go. Try and sort of keep the palette quite simple, um, because I find that that works better so sort of like less colors used in more places and um, gives you a better result at the end of the day i'm just going to plant, do his trousers here in green as well right, i've got a little bit of um, forest moss just to add in um, the shadow there to darken off some of the areas and to just put a little bit under one side of the leaves just to give them a bit more of a shape okay I'm going to use the brown to go across here and the brown again for the bird just as gentle as a wash going over him quite nicely and if his tail put a little bit more color for him for his tail right it's just going to wait just for a brush out and I'm just going to go back in again now I'm going to use the light persimmon here um to do give him a bit of a, a red breast so it's a little bit like a robin type thing and that, I'm going to put a couple of layers on so it's a bit brighter than before. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on this patch here. Okay, that's a patch done. And now we've got his beard to do. And his beard, I'm using um, pumice stone, which is a grey. It's a sort of a greeny grey, which is, but it works really well for this. Um, and I'm quite my brush is quite wet and I'm really sort of dragging this colour out as much as I can to um as much of it as possible so it's taking it all the way around um and going as far as I can before I reload the brush really to just sort of keep it going. Okay so that's and then I'm gonna put a little bit more here around the base of the hat and around his nose create some shadow a little bit under here where there would be shadows quite happily 
And that's okay, just gonna put a bit more of the dark purple on on the edge of the hat. Now that it's dried off a bit, I can just do the last bit of shadowing for me and just put it on quite nicely. You rub it in there we go so there's my gnome all painted up and that's okay and then i just cut them out okay so once it's dry it gets cut out like so so i'm just gonna move my palette this by the way is a oh what they call it blending mat um and it's really good for your inks because they don't dry off so much so it's quite nice to use for your inks now here's my papers and this is my grey board my grey board is cut at seven centimeters by 20 centimeters as is all my white paper the same to go inside it now i'm just i've already pre-done um my holes but um and then i'll mark them when i put the paper on so i'm going to just put, put my paper on and show you how i do that and then how i'm going to edge my board, my grey board so it looks nice as you can see i'm putting my glue nice and close to the edges as can isn't a good game i'm using my my favorite pin flare book binders glue and that and hi thank you francois for your comment that's really nice and that we're just having a so it's a bit of paper. The paper is um from a pack by Paper Boutique. Um, we've had it in the shop. Whether or not we've still got any left, I can't tell you because it's just been it's been one of my favourite packs, and I keep going back to it at the moment. So uh, it's called Bumblebee Dance. But we have got some beautiful papers in, so I'm sure you'd find them that you liked um to your sort of design. I match my papers up as best as I can because obviously these are six by six papers, so then my bit is a bit longer but it's not a problem because you won't see the join soon I'm just going to trim off the excess paper using my craft knife and using the edge of the grey board as my guide okay and I'm going to take my, my um, sanding block here okay I'm just going to take off the edges going down quite nicely the reason i take the edges off like this is because you get a better finish and it feels more um professional when you turn it if that makes sense so i'm just going to make sure it's all glued in that's looking good okay now i've got my, my holes marked on this side so i'm going to just use this side to do it and i've got my my crocodile i'm just going to line it up over my hole and go through Okay, I'm gonna do the same again on this side. Let me just get the I've got it the paper stuck. So I can't see to line up the holes. There we go. Done. Wonderful. Right. Now I'm gonna um just go around the edge of this pad um that I've just done the, the edges of it with um some walnut stain. Um and what it'll do is it'll take the grey off of here, but it'll also edge my cardstock and just give it a nice sort of warm agey tone to it so it just looks a bit more finished when you've done it so i'm just going around the edges quite nicely enjoying myself here i love playing with distress inks they are so versatile they really are i think they're going to be one of my favorite inks on the market and i'm just going to go down on the inside as well i'd already pre-covered this doing exactly the same as what i had done to do the front that you've just seen so all four sides of my pad are going to be done in exactly the same way um i didn't think you want to sit and watch me do that all the way around again and again and again right so now i'm just going to go i'm going to put a faux stitching line around it so i'm using a black fine liner um and i'm just going to do my dashes going around the edge this sort of is a nice way of just doing the little bits that help finish things off um make it look a bit more thought about and a bit more special if that makes sense like you took your time which is always a good thing for a present people like that i 
cutting grey board is easily is easy. Um, I tend to use a rotary cutter and a large ruler because I need pretty much my fingers out of the way of my rotary cutter. But my rotary cutter cuts through the grey board easier than I can with a craft knife. So if you're having trouble cutting grey board, try a rotary blade. Um, I find that it's much easier to use and I get a better finish when I'm doing it. So that's one of my ways of doing that one. Right, so that's that bit. I now also have got um, my mat to cut. I've just cut my mat out. My mat is um, half, it's six and a half centimetres by um, six inches, which, is, which seems a bit stupid, but that's the way, length of the pad. So this is the bit that's going in here. Okay. Um, and again, I'm going to go around that. And I'm just going to put myself some faux stitching on it. Oh, hello, Bex, and hello, Sapphire. And that, I'm trying to say hi to people as I see you come up, but it may seem strange, but my phone is upside down, so I don't actually see it very easily. But um, I'm trying, as they say. I'm just doing it around my edge here. All right, now I just need my brown again and my ink. A bit more walnut stain just around the edges of the cardstock again just to help it give it that nice sort of aged feel and finish okay all right a little bit more glue I'm just going to put that on at a slight angle just because it sort of looks quite nice at a bit of a thing right here's my my gnome and it's going to sit sort of there now I've got some little bits and bobs that I've got that I've pre-made but I will explain what I've done to make them so we can see if they fit which bits look the best All right so this is um a log piece that is comes from a Tim Holtz die that I've got. Um, also have a die now coming at Riverside that also does this, which is quite nice. That's going to sit there. This is from the the mushrooms stamp that the total stamp that's come out also at the same time as the um, gnomes from Francois. And I've coloured him in in the same way with my distress inks, and then I've put some glossy accents over him just to give him a bright up. I thought we'd just do slightly different so that it was uh, so you could see how you can vary it just to make it keep it nice and going along really you don't necessarily want it all the same for everybody now we need some foam pads which i'm just getting out now which where are the ones i want these ones um okay so these are some foam pads i've got these are crafters companion foam pads um, and they are three mil deep so they're quite deep which is nice because they give a nice um depth to your project which is quite good okay so that's done that one just put a couple more onto that one because that's had those opened and those ones have been opened but i can put some glue behind those in a minute right so i'm just going to peel this i'm just going to stick my log on first there's the glue here we go the glue now you might have noticed i've actually got um acorn there that's actually an acorn out the garden that's actually the cups from the garden. Um, I picked them up last year and they've been drying in my drawer um, for the most, uh, most of the summer. So they're now nice and stable um, and I can use them on my projects. And they just work really well with gnomes, I think. So I've got quite a few acorn -y things on at the moment, which is nice. Hi, Fred. And welcome. Right. So one job I don't like is peeling off 
the backing off of the tape is my one thing I'm not overly fond of doing right so there's me gnome going down so he's sitting there now quite happy these little leaves and the ones here are from the die set from Riverside Crafts um, and if you aren't sure um, about how they're coloured if you pop onto last week's um, Facebook live you'll see because I did a card that um, um, with the leaves and how they were all coloured um, with the distress inks um, and also my quick my cheat so that it doesn't take me forever okay and here's my little mushroom my little toadstool and he's going on I think he's going to go on just there this time just to give him a bit of a difference right I've also got in my box a bit where's this? these we need this things out because I like to have bits to finish it off I've got a photo corner and I've got some dots in a purpley colour to tone with um, there quite nicely. I think actually I'm going to do this this, this way around today. I'm going to put the dots down the bottom in a different order. Another dot. And another one. There we go. That's going to be three dots. And my photo corner. Now my photo corner is cut. Literally I cut them off of um, a piece of square cardstock um because i don't have a photo corner cutter um so i did just cut them out myself um, and put them on but they just think it's a nice way of finishing things off um the same with my dots they are actually the remnants off of a die so i've got a die that cuts out um some lace and i keep all of my little dots that come out of it um to use like this because often, I mean, in, I mean, this is not too bad because this is a three D project. But when you're putting things to go in the post, you can't necessarily put things in, um, put lots of gems on them because of the the heights and the depths of what you're put, going to be posting. So a few dots just sort of help. You put a little bit of glossy accents on them so they they shine. It sort of makes it nice and finished. Right. So here's my here's the back of my project which has got exactly the same paper on it um, and then I've cut a tag out with the, I've written handmade with love on it I've got a leaf here that I'm just going to stick on the back there just so that it all blends it all in okay and then to join my project together I'm just using some book rings now if you're a scrapbooker um, you'll remember these because we used to use them to hold all our scrapbooks together and bits um, I use them for all sorts of things now because they're really good. So they get used for holding like with stencils all together in my boxes and um, organising a lot more. Okay. So there's my notepad, which is really pretty. Oh, I quite happy. Now, if you happen to be um, doing something more manly or you want something not quite such just use your paper packs and decorate it in the same way but using a paper pack so you're not taking the time with your coloring and you just use your paper packs and all your cut out bits so it's quite nice but i love these stamps by francois they're really nice um lovely and easy to color um and nice little characters um and sort of like work for everybody if that makes sense so you could do them for all sorts of occasions and that and all sorts of colours. Thank you for joining me um, and I look forward to seeing you next week. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing next week because I haven't actually had a chance to have a look. I know we've got some more stamps coming in um, so I might be doing something, some new stuff but I might just have a play. We shall see. But thank you very much um, and I hope this is okay. I've just had a question come through about the grey board and it's just covered with the paper. All I've done is cover it with paper um, and then the edges have been inked using a um, walnut stain to take the grey off to give it that nice um, brown look. Okay. And I hope that helps. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. See you next week.